Hey everybody, welcome to the Mandalik. I'm John, as always, and it's time for the green set review, the second last set review. We're going to have a few less videos this time around because there are way less gold cards, which means tomorrow will be all the gold cards, all the artifacts, and all of the lands. I guess actually there's less artifacts than normal is the big thing, which I'm a big fan of, but we're talking about green, so let's get started with the first card. Up first is Arasta of the Endless Web. Arasta is two green green for a legendary enchantment creature spider who looks like she's straight out of Dark Souls. At rare, she's a 3-5 with reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. So a 3-5 reach for four is fine. You'll certainly main deck that sometimes, and especially if you have later game plans, because that's a big but. The ability is cute, but I wouldn't count on getting a ton of spiders off of it, um, but they'll help you gum up the ground a little bit. Seems kind of like a B- minus at best, I think. Uh, I'm almost on a C plus for it, just because I think a 3-5 reach that you know once or twice will make a 1-2 isn't insane enough to get into the B range for me at a B minus. Obviously, it's going to be very good if your opponent is the blue-red uh, play during your turn deck. But keep in mind that a lot of spells that would have been instants in other sets are actually auras with flash in this set. So for instance, hopping back to M20, M20 had 31 instants and 20 sorceries below rare. And uh, this set has 24 and 16. So they're definitely not running around quite as much as they used to. Uh, so yeah, B minus for a Rasta. I, I think people are gonna have dreams of many spiders happening and that's not gonna happen. Up next is the Binding of the Titans. The Binding of the Titans is one in a green for an enchantment saga at Uncommon. Act one, each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Act two, exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, you gain one life. Return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's two mana mill three of each of our cards, which may very well help out your opponent. But if it did, next turn I get to rip two of those cards out that were helping them. So that's fine. And maybe I gain some life off. And then I get to probably draw a card. It might just be a land, but it might be a creature. Um, yeah, it, this also triggers Constellation, which green cares about. So I don't know. I think this is probably like a C plus at best. I was actually really down on this at first. And then after reading it over, I was just like, eh, it's, it's all just OK value. C plus value, not a B, but yeah, C plus for the Binding of the Titans. Up next is Dest. Chain Web Arachnir is up next. Chain Web Arachnir is a single green mana for a creature spider at uncommon. It's a 1 2 with reach. When Chain Web Arachnir enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying on opponent controls. Escape three green green, exile four other cards from your graveyard. Chain Web Arachnir escapes with three plus one plus one counters on it, and then of course would do its ETB thingy again. Um, you know, it's a 1 2 reach for one that, that might ping an X one. That's fine. That's like a. C plus maybe it might not even be a C plus that might actually be a D plus you might just side this in if you see flyers because a one two is not too impactful for one but then later escaping and eating something larger there we're going to definitely put this into the C plus range um, I don't think I want to go any higher on this because I do think you're only escaping once maybe twice per game when you know you're having to exile four cards to get this out the first time and then eight cards by the time you've done this twice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not super sold on this being any better than a C+, but I think I am always going to be playing it for those flyers when they show up. Destiny Spinner. Destiny Spinner is one in a green for an enchantment creature human on, add on common. She's a 2-3. Creature and enchantment spells you cast, can't, you control, sorry, can't be countered. Pay three in a green. Target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature tr with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. So a 2-3 for 2, we're used to getting a 1-3 for 2 that does stuff. This is a, an upside on stats alone. She's also an enchantment, which means she uh, triggers Constellation. She's a cheap enchantment, which means you're not getting blown out by enchantment removal. The can't be countered clause is cute, but that never matters all that much in limited. It's just, it's so rare for you to have this creature in your deck, play this creature, be facing a blue deck, that blue deck be playing counter spells, and that blue deck want to play counter spells and they cannot because of this card. It's super rare. That part doesn't matter. Paying three and a green to turn a land into a creature is cute, but it's a 1-1. One, one. If you just have her out, you're going to need some more stuff to be making that a 2-2 two, two or a 3-3, three, three. and I'm not happy if I'm paying four mana to uh, make something anything less than a 3-3. Three, three. 
Now, if I am nifty, cool, I'm happy about that. And if we can make it even bigger, that's going to be pretty darn solid as well. I think Destiny Spinner is totally fine. I, I think she's a very strong C+. You obviously do need to build around her a little bit. If you're not building around enchantments, you know, let's say you're red green or something and your, your, you know, your lands are going to be two twos at best, then she's probably just like a, a generic C, C minus. But in green, white, in green, blue, I think she is a strong C+. Up next is Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Dryad of the Elysian Grove is two and a green for an enchantment creature nymph at rare. It's a two four. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Two four for three. All the stats are going up a little bit. We got a two three for two and now we got a two four for three. You know, that's that's OK. We're used to getting two threes for three. Now, the ability getting to play an extra land every turn sounds great, and perhaps you've played with Oracle of Moldiah or Courser of Crufix, but those can play lands off the top of the library, and those are great. That means that, you know, you're not decimating your hand by playing all of these lands. When you don't get to play from the top of your library, you very rapidly run out of all of the lands in your hand. You know, remember Lanowar Scout where, you know, in Dominaria, you could tap it to put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. It was great, like the first time you did it or the second time, and then you had no more lands. And you would play your land that you topped deck and there would be no more in your hand and you're just never going to get to use that ability anymore. So it sounds a lot better than it is. But the second ability, making all of my lands tap for all colors, now that's great for fixing. So if you are splashing for any other color, this goes way up. If you are playing a full on three color deck, and we'll have to see if that's something that you should consider doing or not, um, that this card's obviously also gonna be very good. And you're gonna wanna have your Altar of the Pantheons and things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sold on this card in a two color deck. In a two color deck, I think this card is like a C because a two four for three is okay especially one that triggers Constellation. Um, but I think this shines when you are getting splashier or greedier with your mana base. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. We'll see how it is. If you can pair this with a lot of card draw, then perhaps you could ramp much faster. Um, but we'll have to see if that works either. I'll keep an eye on this card because I think it could really range. I'm going to start it at a C plus and yeah, it could go anywhere. Up next is the first Iroan Games. The first Iroan Games is two and a green for an enchantment saga at rare. Act one, make a one, one white human soldier creature token. Act two, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Act three, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards. Act four, create a gold token. Uh, gold token, I'm uh, absolutely annoyed they don't explain what a gold token is in the text. There is space for reminder text in that box but a gold token is an artifact that you can sacrifice to add a mana of any color to your mana pool. Anyways, this just seems solid. Uh, you know, there's the potential chance for you to get ruined if your opponent kills the creature getting the counters immediately, especially if it was the 1-1. One, one. Uh, but you know, you paid three mana for it and you'll still at least get the gold while having taken a removal spell out. And if they don't have it, this is just a ton of value for green. You know, the the, the color of card draw. Uh, seems like a solid B- minus to me, getting that 1-1 one, one, and then turning that 1-1 one, one into a 4-4 four, four, or turning something bigger into something bigger because you have that big thing drawing two cards and then getting a mana back like a re Bait. Cool. I think I'll first pick this in some packs. Definitely not over removal, but it is just straight up value. So B minus for first Iroan games. Up next is Gift of Strength. Gift of Strength is one and a green for an instant at common target creature gets plus three plus three and gains reach until end of turn. It's uh, an okay combat trick. Not much else to say about that. It's kind of sucky in the land of flash auras that this is just a one turn pump, but it's going to exist. You're going to have to respect it anytime you see one and a green up. So keep it in mind. Uh, but it is just like a C minus. It's a card that you put in if you have a spot and that's about it. Up next is Hydra's Growth. Hydra's Growth is two and a green for an enchantment aura at uncommon enchant creature. When Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one plus one counters on enchanted creature. This can get out of hand real fast, even the next turn. This is a plus three plus three enchantment for three. That's Oaken Form. So already this just seems infinitely better than Impending Doom, which is Oaken Form just 
infinitely worse. After that, this just gets insane. Obviously, it's got the aura problem, and removal is not non-existent in this set, uh, though this does laugh at enchantment removal, because of course, if all your opponent has in it is enchantment removal, they can get rid of the Hydra's growth, but not the creature, unless it's an enchantment creature. Remember, enchantment creature, for as much as it is an upside, is also a downside. But this seems decently strong. Like in, in, in the B minus range, I think, I, I can't really go any higher on that for auras. Like I, I just, I don't give higher grades for cards that are insane when they work and awful when they don't. Um, so yeah, B minus for Hydra's Growth. Up next is Hyrax Tower Scout. Hyrax Tower Scout is two and a green for a creature human scout at common. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When Hyrax Tower Scout enters the battlefield, untap target creature. It's Centaur Courser with an upside. Sure thing. Totally solid C. Maybe even pushes into the C-plus territory just a little tiny bit, as I'd probably always play the first one. Um, so yeah, just barely into the C-plus or C plus range for Hyrax Tower Scout. Up next is Elysian Carry Added. Elysian Carry Added is one and a green for a creature plant at common. It's a 1-1. One, one. Tap, add one mana of any color. If you control a creature with power four or greater, add two mana of any one color instead. To two mana mana dork, I'm sold right there. Uh, I'll happily play that just like Golden Hind from original Theros block. And a little later, it ramps like it's two dorks. Super sold. This is a B for me, just pure value uh, that it can represent. It's obviously not a B like you're going to win the game pretty soon because of this card, but it's huge value. The fact that on turn three, you can probably cast your four power creature and then on turn four have six mana available. That, that's a ton. So yeah, very strong B for Elysian carry added. I'm going to love this card. I'm going to first pick this card even when I shouldn't. Up next is Inspire Awe. Inspire Awe is three and a green for an instant at common. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, except combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Also Scry 2, because we got to justify four mana here. Four mana is a tall ask for a fog that might be one-sided if all of my creatures are enchant or enchantment creatures. But if that's true, then maybe you can play this. One-sided fogs are definitely better than symmetrical fogs, but it's just going to feel so bad when your opponent's also playing enchantment or enchanted creatures. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to go for an F on this. It's not a complete fog. I'm just going to go for a D minus. D minus for Inspire Awe. I predict I will literally never cast this spell. Up next is Clothus's Design. Clothus's Design is five and a green for a sorcery at common. Creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. Not getting trample, not being instant speed. No, 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 no. F, this is an awful garbage card. It's too expensive. It does not do what you need it to do. It is awful. Straight F for Clothus's Design. Don't put six mana cards in your deck that don't do anything. This needs to give trample. This needs to give evasion. This needs to do something. If you're winning the game because of this card, you were probably winning the game anyways. And this card could have been anything. F for Clothus' design. Up next is Loathsome Chimera. Loathsome Chimera is two and a green for a creature Chimera at common. It's a 4-1. Escape, four and a green, exile three other cards. Loathsome Chimera escapes with a plus one, plus one counter on it. I don't really want a 4-1. It dies to just everything, and I don't want to put that many resources into bringing it back as a 5-2. I'm going to cut this card really hard. I've got it in like the D-plus range. I expect to probably never play this unless I am just the most desperate I've ever been. D-plus for Loathsome Chimera. It is pretty loathsome. Up next is Mantle of the Wolf. Mantle of the Wolf is three and a green for an enchantment aura at rare enchant creature. Enchantment creature gets plus four plus four. When Mantle of the Wolf is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create two, two, two green wolf creature tokens. Now this is a great aura. This is an, a, a just fantastic aura. It's super strong. It only gets blown out by instant speed removal bounce in response to casting it. That is the one 
place where this uh, aura is actually vulnerable. If this goes on the creature, you've got four power and toughness, regardless of what happens for the, the duration of the aura's life, it's attached to that creature. And then when that aura goes away, it's in the form of two, two, two wolves. This seems like a totally strong card. Uh, I'm not gonna take it over removal, but other than removal, this is gonna be a first pick card. Um, it, it's just fantastic. It is a strong B aura. These are the auras you want to do, the ones where you can't get blown out by them. So strong B for Mantle of the Wolf. Up next is Moss Viper. Moss Viper is a single green mana for a creature snake at common. It's a 1-1 one, one death touch. Hey look, Sedge Scorpion is back. You know, Sedge Scorpion, literally from original Theros, reprinted functionally the same, but instead turned into a snake. Honestly, almost makes me wonder if Snake Tribal is going to show up in Ikoria or something like that. But yeah, this is Sedge Scorpion, this is Typhoid Rats, we've seen these cards a ton. These are the Death Touchers that I always talk about. I don't want to pay 5 for a 5-5 five, five Death Toucher, I want to pay 1 for a 1-1. One, one. Because they're gonna do the same thing. The 5-5 five, five will obviously block way better. But this is gonna trade up infinitely, and it's fantastic. Strong, strong, strong C-plus for Moss Viper. Um, yeah, it's just a very good card. Up next is Mystical Renewal. Mystical Renewal is a single green mana for an instant at common. Put target enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, this is even better than Revoke Existence. This card will just kill, essentially, some pretty serious creatures for a single green mana. Green mana, just poof, killing gods. I'll play these in the main deck easily, whereas the second Revoke Existence does give me slight pause about main decking. Uh, instant speed, super cheap, as cheap as it can get. Love this card. I think it's actually a B minus. I think this is actually a really high pick because with auras, with enchantment creatures specifically, everybody's going to be packing stuff that this is going to hit for real cheap. Um, this is going to be at its best used on enchantment creatures, especially threatening ones. Up next is Nessian Boar. Nessian Boar is three green green for a creature boar at rare. It's a 10-6. All creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. People are going to misevaluate this for sure. I'm positive of it. Sure, your opponent's blocking with, you know, five creatures. They get to draw five cards, and then they probably kill this because it's only got six toughness that seems like a whole bunch of a downside but you shouldn't be attacking with this just all willy-nilly you should do it only when it won't die or much more importantly when the game ends because you attacked with it because all of your other creatures are getting through unblocked this is the true value of this card it's not that it's a 10-6 that doesn't matter as much it's that everything has to block it, which means that this also says, give all of your other creatures unblockable. I think this card's gonna be pretty bomby. I think it's gonna get passed late because people are gonna be really down on that uh, drawing their opponent's card side. And I, I think it's gonna be misplayed as well. So I, I've actually got this at a B. Uh, I, I absolutely identify the downside. Obviously, if you you know can't attack with it without ending the game or with it dying and your opponent just getting a bunch of cards, that does suck. But it's a lure effect without having to put any additional resources into it, unlike Merrileaf Rider. So I've got Nessian Boar to B. I'm prepared for this to be very bomby and to, uh, you know, get it like seventh pick because people are going to say, oh, this card's bad. Up next is Nessian Horn Beetle. Nessian Horn Beetle is one and a green for a creature insected on common. It's a 2-2. Two -two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power four or greater, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. Unfortunately, it does say another, so it doesn't self-fuel itself. Uh, this is a bear with a pretty darn good upside, and an upside that will quickly stop making it be a bear. This just seems solid, like a super easy C+, assuming that you can trigger it with some reliability. And even if you wish, if it's a C. Uh, super awesome. It might even creep into the B minus range. Um, it does take some time to be that good though. So I'm just going to hold off on a C plus, but a very strong C plus for Nessie and Horn Beetle. 
Up next is Nessian Wanderer. Nessian Wanderer is one and a green for a creature Seder Scout at Uncommon. It's a 1-3 with Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Seems totally fine. I've learned to love my 1-3s for 2 since Dominaria, and this one seems fine. Most green decks will be enchantment heavy, uh, especially green, white, green, blue. And, you know, this gets to thin your deck slightly, which is nice. Finding lands to keep you curving, all decent. Probably still only like a C plus. The effect isn't powerful enough for me to jump this into the B range, but I think Nessian Wanderer is definitely a C plus. Maybe not in your red, green, or uh, green, black decks quite as much, but green, white, and green, blue for sure. Up next is Nexus Wardens. Nexus Wardens is two and a green for a creature Seder Archer at common. It's a 1-4 with Reach. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. Meh. Meh. Seems like a sideboard card to me, like you would side in Giant Spider or something. Gaining two life off your constellations is just not enough value for me to put this into my main deck, but I'll keep this in my sideboard and uh, happily throw it in when I do see some flyers kicking around. And there's not many flyers in the set so I, I see no reason to main deck this but i'll happily pop it in out of the sideboard so i think it's like a d plus and could even be a c minus just because you'll play this if you need a creature so c minus actually for nexus warden up next is Nylea Keen-Eyed, our last monocolored god. Nylea Keen-Eyed is three and a green for a legendary enchantment creature god at Mythic. She's a 5-6 indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylea isn't a creature. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Pay two and a green, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. Nylea seems solid. She's an obvious first pick and does exactly what green wants to do. Ramp out creatures. Also, getting probably card draw is pretty darn nice. And, you know, if you don't hit a creature, being able to throw that into the graveyard if you want to is just solid. She seems like an easy first pick and probably just an easy A+. A+, for Nylea Keen-Eyed. Up next is Nylea's Forerunners. Nylea's Forerunner is four and a green for an enchantment creature beast at common. It's a 5-3 trample, and other creatures you control have trample as well. 5-3 trample for five. I'm not really into that at all. Giving my other creatures trample, cute, but five mana, and this just dies so easily, so if your opponent is afraid of the trample, it's not hard for them to kill this. A Meyer's Grasp kills this. Probably pretty telling that it's a common, so, you know, that means design probably doesn't think it's that amazing. If it was something that was super impactful, this would be upshifted to uncommon. So I think it's probably just like a C minus C at absolute best. I'm going to start out not playing it, though, because I, I don't want two drops to kill my five drops. C- for Nylea's Forerunner. Up next is Nylea's Huntmaster. Nylea's Huntmaster is 3 and a green for a creature Centaur Shaman at common. It's a 4-3. When Nylea's Huntmaster enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is your devotion to green. So at least plus 1 plus O. It's not awful, but it's not good either. 4-3 four, for 4 is okay. Giving something that boost for a turn, sure. All around it's like a C. I don't think we jump into the C plus range for this card. Up next is Nylea's Intervention. Nylea's Intervention is X green green for a sorcery at rare. Choose one. Search your library for up to X land cards. Reveal them. Put them into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Or Nylea's Intervention deals twice X damage to each creature with flying. This card's an okay sideboard flyer removal, except you have to probably put four mana into this total in order for it to actually work. Paying one green green probably doesn't clear the skies, but two green green is probably going to get you pretty darn close to killing most flyers in the format. And if you get to kill multiple flyers, awesome. This is a fantastic sideboard card. But like I said, there's not that many flyers in the set, so there's no reason to put this in your main deck for that reason. And then getting lands? I don't care. By the time you want to go and get those lands, you already have the mana. And they don't go to the battlefield, they go to your hand, so you're still only playing one a turn. Uh, if you're desperate for a way to fix your mana, I guess playing this for one green green, go and get your uh, uh, splash land is okay. But yeah, that, that's a common. This is going to be possibly the rare that I'm going to feel the worst about opening in limited. Uh, I have this at like a D, uh, D plus, I guess, because it is a fantastic uh, sideboard flyer hate card, but... That's about all it is. D-plus for Nylea's Intervention. Up next is Nyx Herald. Nyx Herald is 2 and a green for an enchantment creature Centaur Shaman at Uncommon. It's a 2-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains Trample until end of turn. 
This card seems good, like like really good to me. If it's a loan, you've got a 3-4 trample for three. That's pretty nutty. If you have a bigger creature that this can target, then watch out. Putting this on a Nessian boar, giving it plus one, plus one, making it 11-7 trample is uh, very, very, very scary. I think this card's going to help games just absolutely end. I've got it at a B minus. Uh, I think I'm going to love Nyx Herald. Up next is Nyx Bloom Ancient. Nyx Bloom Ancient is four green, green, green for an enchantment creature, elemental at mythic. It's a five, five trample. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. People are falling over themselves for this card for commander and probably uh, brawl, I would imagine, but in limited, powerful, powerful meh. It's a seven mana, five, five trample. That is a Far cry from Colossal Dreadmaw. Getting 21 a mana available the next turn is cute, but it's so late in the game that I'd be shocked if you can do anything with that 21 mana. People are going to pick this and play this way, 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 way more than they should. I think it is a D, and the only reason I'm not giving it an F is to stop Flame Wars from happening. <laughs> I think this card is pretty much stone unplayable in Limited. Up next is Nyxborn Colossus. Nyxborn Colossus is three green, green, green for an enchantment creature giant at common. It's a six, seven vanilla. So green has the most cards that care about devotion. And I still don't really want to play this card. Um, getting uh, a six, seven for six just doesn't seem like something I care about, really. It's just a big, dumb creature. And it's an enchantment creature, which means a single green mana kills this. One and a white kills this. There's just not enough going on here. I think this is a, a very weak D minus. This is another card that I just expect to literally never cast, and I don't think you should either. D minus for Nyxborn Colossus. Up next is Omen of the Hunt. Omen of the Hunt is two and a green for an enchantment common. It's got flash. When it ETBs, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, pay two green, sacrifice it, scry two. This, of course, is great fixing, and it's ramp because it goes straight to the battlefield, unlike Nylea's intervention. Uh, um, yeah, and then later you get to scry two off of your, your ramp spell or your fixing spell or your constellation trigger or whatever this did. It does all three. All of that's good. I think this is a very solid C in a two-color deck and a C plus if you are splashing. Up next is Fairy's Band Brawler. Fairy's Band Brawler is four green green for a creature centaur warrior at uncommon. When Fairy's Band Brawler enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, this seems fine. This, this seems very fine. 4-4 four, four for six, obviously a little bit overcosted, but it kills something. If it uh, has to, it trades off with a, a four power creature, making this, you know, six mana sorcery speed removal, which is not great, but is something we have definitely played in the past in various formats <clears throat> original theros <clears throat> and if it can survive by killing something with three power or less that's just gravy i think this card's a very strong b minus uh, i'm not first picking it typically but i think it looks pretty solid it reminds me of the uh the very friendly dinosaur from uh guilds of ravnica ravnica allegiance whichever one that was up next is Plummet. Plummet's one in a green for an instant common destroy target creature with flying. Every time we talk about this, we call it a D plus. It's one of the best sideboard cards. You never ever main deck it, but out of the sideboard, it's going to be very good. It's going to kill something probably worth a bunch of mana for only two at instant speed. D plus, don't put it in your main deck. There's not enough flyers for it. Up next is Relentless Pursuit. Relentless Pursuit is two and a green for a sorcery at common. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land card from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. I was relatively down on this at the at the start because it's a sorcery speed, three mana. You might whiff and only draw one card. But then I was like, you know what? The odds are actually relatively decent that in the top four, you're going to find these two cards. And so it is divination. And it even puts the rest of the cards into the graveyard, which could help you with escape and things like that. So I think this is actually an okay card. It's still not going to go above like a C plus to me, but I am going to start optimistically at a C plus because this is basically divination uh, a, a decent amount of the time. You know, divination, that classic green card. Up next is Renata called to the hunt. Renata called to the hunt is two green green for a legendary enchantment creature demigod at uh, uncommon. She is a star three. Renata's power is equal to your devotion to green. 
Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Renata seems okay. A two, three for four is a little bit costly, but if she lives, making all your other creatures bigger than what you're paying is nice. And she may start out more like a three, three or a four, three. All in all, fine. An enchantment which matters very much in green seems like just a totally fine B to me. A B for Renata called to the hunt. Up next is Return to Nature. Return to Nature is one in a green for an instant at common. Choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. This is the best Return to Nature has ever been. Because that third ability actually has huge implications this time around. Like the other enchantment hate, this is probably just totally main deckable for the first one. The second one, I think, might also be main deckable um, because of the ability to ruin escape plans. And being instant, I like this better than revoke existence generally. Of course, revoke existence has the upside of exiling the creature instead. But yeah, this is return to nature. I think this might be the first time that we're actually going to give return to nature a C plus instead of a D plus, but a C plus for return to nature. Up next is Satessan Champion. Satessan Champion is two and a green for a creature human warrior at rare. It's a 1-3 with Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Satessan Champion and draw a card. Obviously a huge payoff for the Constellation deck. Can tripping off every enchantment is great. That makes every enchantment in the entire set much better than it was before, especially creatures. And this growing bigger and harder to kill without direct removal is great. This is a first pick, easy build around. I think it's a B plus, assuming that you are in that deck. Obviously, if you're in red green, well, this maybe looks a little bit worse, but otherwise B plus for Satessan Champion. Up next is Satessan Petitioner. Satessan Petitioner is one green green for a creature human druid at uncommon. It's a 2-2. When Satessan Petitioner enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to your devotion to green. Why is this an uncommon? It's a three mana 2-2 two -two that just gains you some life. Well, back in original Theros, we had two green green for a 3-3 three -three that gained life equal devotion. And it was good, like good, good, good at common. Now, I do think part of the reason that Nylea's Disciple was so good was that it was common. You could get two or three or four, and the first one gained you two, the second one gained you four, the third one, assuming they're all three are still in the battlefield, gained you six, and that's if you had nothing else on the battlefield. So you could actually gain a pretty ludicrous amount of life with Nylea's Disciples. This being uncommon means that you're probably only gonna get this one. But it's still a two-two for three, which is slightly overcosted. but it's gonna gain you a bare minimum of two life and uh, when we get that incidental life on a card that is you know fine it, it makes a card that is more fine uh, so I think Satessa Petitioner is going to be a C plus I don't think she's going to be as good as Nylea's Disciple was I think part of the the upside of Nylea's Disciple was that it was an on or was a common up next is Satessan Skirmisher. Satessan Skirmisher is one and a green for a creature human warrior at common. It's a 2-1 with Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Satessan Skirmisher gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's a piker that might sometimes be a slightly bigger creature for a single turn. That's filler. That's about it. I think it's a pretty cuttable C, even if you're in the Constellation deck. Not getting counters or anything, not getting evasion doesn't make this creature all that special. So I think it's around a C minus. I think this is gonna play out kind of like Garen Briggs Squire. It's exactly what the deck wants to be doing and it's just not gonna do it well enough. C minus for Satessan Skirmisher. Up next is Satessan Training. Satessan Training is one and a green for an enchantment aura at common enchant creature you control. When Satessan Training enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus O oh, and has trample. The draw a card saves this for sure. If you're in an aura E constellation deck, this is fine since it cantrips, triggers that constellation, and gives an effect that is fine. It's not amazing, but hey, throw this on your Nessian boar, and now it's an 11 power trampler, and that's scary. In the right deck, I think this is like a C. Honestly, the card draw probably even pushes this up to a C plus. But if you're not really caring about constellation, I think Satessan training definitely does drop into the uh, the rather cuttable range. Up next is Skola Grove Dancer. Skola Grove Dancer is one and a green for an enchantment creature, Satyr Druid. At common, it's a 2 2. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. How are land cards getting into your graveyard? Well, pay two and a green. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Hopefully, it's a land. 
So it's a bear with an upside by being an enchantment creature, but the text on the card is weird and I'm not sure it's that much of an upside. Green's not really doing escape that much, but what it is doing when paired with black is sort of recursion. Some of that will be escape from a few green cards and of course black cards, but some more of it is just sort of bringing stuff back using cards that bring stuff back non-escapey. So I do think this is like a green black card. I, I think the, the casting cost here is a little bit misleading because I don't know that you put this in your other decks. It's an enchantment creature, so it triggers constellation, but it could just put in better enchantment creatures or better enchantments. So I don't know. I have this at like a C. I, I can't get a good read on it. The gaining life just doesn't seem worth it. The milling is expensive. I don't know. I, I'm pretty out on it. I'm at a C which is a very non-committal grade. I think realistically, it's just a creature I'm probably not gonna put it in, into a deck. Up next is Voracious Typhon. Voracious Typhon is two green green for a creature snake, eh? snake tribal, beast at common. It's a four four with escape five green green, exile four other cards. Voracious Typhon escapes with three plus one plus one counters on it. It's a seven seven for seven. This card just seems good. Four mana, four four is a uh, perfect vanilla test passing and is quite possibly my favorite of the vanilla test passers. Five, five for five, I'm less happy with. Six, six for six, vanilla. I, I'm not typically ever playing. Seven, seven, no. But a four, four for four, you bet I'm in. This is gonna be solid. And then if it dies and your opponent's going to need to kill it because a four, four is a big creature, later in the game, when you have time, you can just make it into a seven, seven for seven which is okay because you already had the 4-4 four, for four, 4. So Voracious Typhon just looks like a very good C plus to me. Uh, I, I think it's just a very, very, very good common creature. So strong C plus for Voracious Typhon. Our second last green card is Warbriar Blessing. Warbriar Blessing is one in a green for an enchantment aura at common. Enchant creature you control. When Warbriar Blessing enters the battlefield, enchanted creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Enchanted creature gets plus O plus two. A fight spell for two mana that gives a toughness boost is solid. It is typically better to get a power boost on your fight spells, but still, this is totally like a, a very solid B, I think, for removal. Not getting to trade higher than the creature previously was keeps it from being a B plus, but also getting a constellation trigger out of this is pretty decent as well. So perhaps that constellation trigger could even grow this creature uh, more depending on what is on the board. So I think this is a very solid B for Warbriar Blessing. Uh, a good fight spell for Theros for sure. And our final card for today is Wolf Willow Haven. Wolf Willow Haven is one in a green for an enchantment aura at uncommon enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional green. Pay four in a green sacrifice Wolf Willow Haven. Create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Activate this ability only during your turn. This is probably just fine getting to ramp trigger constellation, count devotion, which, you know, green, I said again, is the, the color where it matters most and it doesn't still even matter that much. Black equally uh, cares about devotion. It has just as many devotion cards as green does. Um, but yeah, then when your ramp isn't needed, you get to spend way too much mana for a 2-2, but you had all that value out of this previously. So I think this is a totally okay, like C plus. Uh, Enchant a land to, to ramp is typically pretty okay. It's like a mana dork. It just doesn't block like a mana dork. So C plus for Wolf Willow Haven. I think it's gonna do just enough to be good. So that's going to wrap it up for green. Green is interesting. It seems to really waffle between cards that are absolutely fantastic and cards that are deeply mediocre, like Clothis's Design and the Fog and the, the Vanilla Enchantment Creature, I think is the worst of the five. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think of green in the comments down below. What, uh, what, what, what color pie breaks did green do this time? let me know. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. You can find me at patreon.com slash if you want to become a backer there and help out. Uh, as well, make sure you do check out twitch.tv slash themanaleek on Wednesday, where I will be playing a whole bunch of Theros Sealed early on Magic Arena, thanks to Wizards for inviting me to the Early Access event. The easiest way to help out, of course, is like, share, and subscribe, but if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all tomorrow for the final set review for Theros Beyond Death.